over the rest of the country. Thanks for your company on First Edition on the eve of Budget 2015. And with me now is the Assistant Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg. Mr Frydenberg, thanks very much for your time. I want to ask you a couple of things relating to your area of responsibility. First of all, on uh, car expenses. You're going to be revealing some savings in relation to tax deductions, some new rules on to tax deductions for cars. This obviously relating to salary sacrificing, that's right? No, it's not salary sacrificing, Kieran. It's related to the statutory formula uh, that people can claim a work-related deduction for their use of their motor vehicle. Back uh, 30 years ago, the government established um, the rates and they have been CPI indexed since then. But now we're modernising the rates, so no longer will you get a rate depending on the size of the engine of your motor vehicle, but there will be one consistent rate. Um, this is a saving of about $845 million, but it's really modernising the framework. And over the last 24 hours, I've spoken to the heads of the major motor vehicle associations in Australia. They understand the rationale for what we're doing. Uh, and, and so what, in what circumstance would someone be affected by this? Is it, is it someone with a novated lease or, or no, 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 a it, corporate no, car? No, it's the, if you've got your own car um, and that you are driving it for work-related purposes. Um, currently so small you, businesses? Well, is if, that you, right? well if you've got a small engine in your car, you get 66 cents uh, back per kilometre, up to 5,000 kilometres. If you've got a medium-sized uh, engine, then you get a 76 cents, and if it's a larger size engine, you get 77 cents. Uh, we're creating a one flat rate, which will see some people on uh, smaller engine vehicles getting more, and some people on medium and larger size engines getting less. And its work is across what sort of sectors? Is it is it small business or is it you know? Well, there are a lot of people of who use, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's across all sectors, but this is very different. It has to be pointed out to Labor's. Uh, FBT changes where they in 2013 and we opposed it wanted to get rid of a entire statutory formula in relation to fringe benefits tax concessions for salary sacrifice vehicles that's not what we're doing and we opposed it then and that was a 1.8 billion dollar saving that Labor was seeking to get this is more akin to what Labor did in 2011 Kieran when they also rationalized the various rates that were given for people using their motor vehicle and creating one so our Labor at the time uh, appreciated the coalition supporting their measure. Bill Shorten went into the parliament and said thank you to the coalition for being constructive and we'd hope they'd be constructive here too. OK, now the Australian reports the government's in a fourth phase of a smaller government agenda. Uh, the public service being targeted again for further savings? Now, this is all about a contestability framework. This is about understanding what is the role of government. And government shouldn't be seeking to duplicate what can be done by the private sector, nor should government be, you know, duplicating the roles that may be done in other agencies and organisations. Under the previous government, uh, you know, bureaucracy grew like topsy. Uh, and unfortunately, that was at a huge cost to the taxpayer. Um, so what we have done is, in the last budget and now in this budget, through Matthias Corman's work tried to st streamline the process. Uh, when the Commission of Audit uh, came down last year, they said they couldn't even count the number of government agencies and committees. So we've dramatically uh, streamlined. For example, and another, bringing, another 32 to go. There'll, there'll be more to come. But for example, bringing AusAid into DFAT and aligning um, those two agencies together was, was a big saving. Bringing uh, the Department of Customs and Border Protection together with immigration is also another one. Uh, we've privatised Medibank Private. Uh, we got more than a billion dollars, Kieran, than initially was expected for the taxpayer. Um, that was a good result. Okay. And, and what about continue the, with the privatisation? The health and education flagged as the departments in line mm. for further uh, trimming is this basically relating to overlap with state jurisdictions? Is that the key here? Well, there may be, and it also may be overlapping, you know, with what work is being done in other departments because uh, often um, there is some duplication. So, look, we're looking to ensure that the departments can do the best work possible, but also that the cost to the taxpayer um, is also fair and reasonable. And it's it's about getting that balance right, uh, and smaller government is often more efficient government. One of the uh, the advisers to, on the paid parental leave scheme has described this as a mother of all insults. The suggestion that the, that the government is making that thousands of women are double dipping on paid parental leave, uh, given the prime minister had suggested a six-month fully full replacement wage mm. approach, uh, is this now 
a, a massive backflip from the Prime Minister in terms of his thinking on this, bringing individuals back to the bare minimum on paper and a leaf. Now, again, this is you know, creating the best possible value for the taxpayer. I mean, the taxpayer wouldn't want uh, somebody uh, to be getting money from the government if they were getting much more from the private sector. And, and so this is avoiding that double-dipping scenario, which is, I think, only fair. Um, but it's also prudent economic management. Uh, we're not proceeding, as you know, uh, with uh, the original plan on the paid parental leave scheme. We're now investing more money into childcare. Which would have been, well. which would have been you know, just as unfair by the <coughs> same starting point that the government's now making this argument, because people earn different amounts. Hmm. And if they're getting a paid parental leave scheme in addition to the government's one, again, I guess that is comparable to the, the, the Prime Minister's previous plan. No, no, no. We thought that the original paid parental leave scheme as proposed by the Prime Minister would boost workforce participation. We've now decided to go down another route with our childcare proposals because, as Scott Morrison and the Prime Minister have pointed out, some 240,000 parents may now enter the workforce or stay in the workforce more for longer as a result of the incentives we've now provided with the additional uh, paid money that we're now providing for childcare. Do you feel sorry for Joe Hockey? to the extent that he's copying a fair bit of flack in the lead-up to this budget for, for being overwhelmed, overshadowed by particularly Mr Morrison? I think this speculation in the media has been absolutely ridiculous uh, because I've been working with Scott Morrison, with Tony Abbott, with Warren Truss, uh, with Matthias Cormann and Joe Hockey uh, intensely over the last six months. And Joe Hockey has been leading those discussions with the Prime Minister as the Treasurer should. Uh, now, he's been bunkered down, putting the final touches on what we believe will be a warmly received budget. Uh, Scott Morrison is responsible in his portfolio, Kieran, for one third of the government's budget. And two of the biggest initiatives uh, next week, or uh, over the course of the coming weeks, that you'll see rolled out is the childcare and the pensions. And it was only appropriate that he went out and explained them early on. So he hasn't, uh, he hasn't been sidelined intentionally? Uh, absolutely not. I mean, I think he's doing a fantastic job. Um, I think it's very difficult, the scenario that he's dealing with, Kieran, with the falling iron ore prices and the pressure we're seeing on the revenue side. At the same time, we're running into roadblocks in the Senate. So this year's budget of Joe Hockey will be pragmatic, but also really seize the opportunity for Australians going forward. Mr Frydenberg, appreciate your time. Thank nice you. We'll chat to you uh, again over the next day or so, no doubt. Look forward to it. We're going to take you now to Jenny Macklin. She's the Labor